They are the unsung heroes of the medical world. Their diagnosis can often mean the difference between life and death and setting a patient on an appropriate treatment path. I mean, it's a very high stakes position. In most cases, a pathologist's diagnosis is expected to be 100% accurate 100% of the time. For making those critical diagnoses, pathologists have relied on the light microscope as their instrument of choice. But all of that could soon change. As much of the world goes digital, so too is the world of pathology. Digital pathology is a way of taking our current technology, which is rather arcane if you really think about it. That is where we take bits of patients, tissue, tumors, etc., put it on a glass slide. Digital pathology is taking that glass slide and turning it into zeros and ones. Uh, th these images are then digitized and you can review on any screen in the world. This instrument, a slide scanner, something that converts a traditional glass slide into a digital image, promises to usher in a whole new way of practicing pathology in Canada. I think Canada has an ability to lead in North America on this field. Dr. Victor Tron is on the leading edge when it comes to embracing digital pathology in Canada. As Chief of Laboratory Medicine at St. Michael's Hospital and St. Joseph's Hospital, he's become something of a digital champion. Our hope is uh, ideally to be the first hospital uh, in Canada, along with St. Joe's, to embrace this technology. This type of technology is catching hold, particularly in Europe, and we see huge advantages and return on, on investment if we uh, push this ahead in Canada. Right now, Dr. Tron and his colleagues are using digital pathology for niche applications, but he's convinced it's the way of the future. I think it's the single most important advance we can make in cancer diagnoses. I think we need to embrace it. I just see this as, as being a, a great advance. Dr. Tron is not alone. His colleague, Dr. Andrew Evans, Director of Telepathology at the University Health Network, a network of four teaching hospitals, is at the forefront of the digital wave. The story at University Health Network for Digital Pathology began back in 2003. From a quality perspective, we've been able to optimize the accuracy of frozen section interpretation by leveraging the ability to access multiple pathologists and also to reduce the, the incidence of deferred diagnoses to surgeons. Just as radiology went digital, pathology is poised to do the same. I think the, the upside for the patient in digital pathology is, is uh, creating access to uh, subspecialty uh, pathology expertise where it's needed. And I think the, the real potential here is that we're, you know, there's a growing expectation for, for quality assurance and um, uh, said simply double reads of new cancer diagnoses. Despite the upside, there are obstacles to overcome. There are a number of, of barriers to the implementation uh, and adoption of digital pathology. Uh, I think chief among them is uh, just the attitudes of pathologists who have not worked with the technology. It's a very different way of reviewing a slide. There is, a, there is definitely a learning curve and it, you're uh, in, you know, for the lack of a better description, you're out of your comfort zone. There's also a price tag. There's the, the initial uh, capital cost and infrastructure cost to establish a digital pathology network, which is not cheap, but the, uh, the savings will come in, in terms of access by being able to access subspecialty pathologists uh, in a faster, more streamlined way. And then this could, uh, down the road, could save uh, having to revisit diagnoses to maybe uh, obtain additional biopsies or perform additional unnecessary procedures. Despite these challenges, the potential to improve patient outcomes is enormous. When I look at a case like this versus the microscope, which is sitting here, I, I see the entire field comfortably. And I think uh, that gives me um, a great amount of um, assurance that I haven't missed anything. Sometimes I, I do worry about that because when you look down the microscope, 
I call that 19th century technology versus 21st century, 21st century technology, right? I feel confident I'm looking at the, at the real thing. And here I'm using a simple mouse. There's lots of sophisticated devices. And I can zoom in on an area, I can move things around, I go to high power, I go to low power. Um, this is, this is uh, very intuitive. I think uh, for those of us that have grown up dealing with uh, a mouse, I, I mean, this is very easily done. Patient-centered care that offers up tremendous potential in a high-stakes field where there's no room for error. I know when they brought in laparoscopic surgery, there were surgeons that said, you know what, it's time for me to retire. I don't think I want to embrace that. And, and those that did, I mean, this was a huge advance. I mean, younger pathologists are going to embrace this without a problem. And I think, you know, patients will do better.